Hello. It's been a while. I don't usually use my YouTube channel much anymore, uh, but I've decided to start using it again. And I figured a good way to start using it again would be to run through uh, some of my favorite software. Um, and first on the chopping block is UVI Falcon, which I use constantly. Um, I've had it for, God, like, six years now or something. Um, and I feel like it's a real workhorse. I use it on almost every song track that I make. Uh, it's incredibly versatile. It sounds amazing. Um, it's kind of like a semi modular environment to work in. Um, so I thought I'd just run through making a patch and maybe I'll keep doing that, uh, over the coming weeks. Uh, months, whatever. Um, so here we are. This is UVI Falcon. I've got a, a uh, initialized patch here, empty program. <clears throat> um, and over the side here, you can see there's, these are all oscillator types. Um, I, I did mention this is a very vast <laughs> platform. <laughs> so we got all of these sampling options, uh, which I feel like fairly self-explanatory. We're not going to get into these today. That's that deserves its own video all on its own. I thought we would just start with something pretty simple with this analog oscillator, um, which is kind of like the most basic one in the package. Um, you can see that there's all these others, additive, analog stack, drum, FM, noise, organ, pluck, texture, wavetable. They're all fantastic in their own way and they all serve a specific purpose. Um, but let's just get one of these up and get that by dragging it across here to the key group section. Um, and we just get a sine wave right off the bat. Um, <clears throat> but let's make that a saw. Very buzzy. Uh, and let's bring these voices up to eight. Make it stereo. And... you know, classic uh, super saw sound. And I do think this synth sounds really great. And obviously that's just one oscillator doing its thing. Well, I guess it's eight oscillators technically, if you really want to get, uh, you know, pedantic about it. But anyway, um, whenever you load up a new oscillator, you get a uh, ADSR envelope. Some of these ones actually default to a uh, D A D S, uh, R or something to that effect or D D A D S H R or something like that. Um, a different kind of envelope generator. Um, but here I'm just going to do the classic thing. <laughs> just bring these all the way up and like instant pad, I guess. Um, this is the most basic of patches so far, but we can alter this of course. And there are a million different filters to choose from. Um, I should probably explain just the sort of structure of the synth. So you've got your key group layer. It's called key group because you can adjust this way you can make splits and stuff like this blue section is this oscillator. I could have another oscillator in, and have a different key group and make a split or I could have them layered on top of each other. And so then it's just two oscillators in the same key group. And the reason it's called a key group other than the split aspect is that you can also um, tie things to, that's where you tie things to velocity and uh, key tracking and stuff like that. Whereas in the other tiers of the architecture um, of the synth, you can't do that. Like in layer, you can't uh, use the keys um, to alter, to be a modulator, I should say. Um, 
We'll get to that though. So I'm just gonna add a filter. And one that I often go for is this expander filter, and we'll get to that in a sec. But off the bat, I think a good one to start with is a phaser filter, especially for this saw wave sound. And it's just, it's literally just a phaser, really. Which I think sounds pretty lush. Um, and this is the amazing thing about UVI Falcon is that I can modulate any of these knobs um, just by right clicking on them, add modulation. And I'm gonna add a parametric LFO, I think. And it's parametric because it brings it up down here in the modulation section and we can do things to the shape, which is fun. And the, all of these knobs can also be modulated. So it gets very uh it gets very modular very quickly if you wanted to. Um so let's just see how that sounds like. Um, let's move this frequency. I might change the shape again so it's more rounded. can add more peaks up to 12 and with this phaser filter you could uh, key track it and you could use it as a sort of comb filter if you wanted you can bring it into negative feedback So that's fun, and we we all enjoy a phaser. Um, so I'm gonna add another filter on top of this, and I'm gonna choose the expander. And the great thing about this filter is you can click on it and you've got access to all of these filter types, which is pretty amazing, I have to say. <laughs> uh, you know, a lot of options here. So I'm gonna click pick this one. Um, Or maybe instead I'll pick this one. soften up the sound a bit um, and I'm going to add modulation to it and I'm going to add DAHDSR that's what I was trying to remember before brings it up down the bottom here you have a lot of attack a lot of decay uh, bring the sustain down and bring the release up and all of these can be Tweet as well, which is handy. I'm just gonna, with this slider here, reduce the intensity of the modulation.
So already, uh, we've got a pretty amazing sound, I think. And like, it's extremely simple. Uh, you know, there's not much going on here, but it does sound amazing. Um, and I think that just, it hints at the possibilities of the instrument. Um, cause everything can be modulated. Uh, and not only can everything be modulated, but you can make macros out of everything. Um, there are very few controls in the synth that, um, cannot be modulated or controlled with something else, which I think is, you know, that's what I love about <clears throat> these kinds of, uh, sort of modular or semi-modular synths is just the, the only real limit is your, uh, imagination or, and your CPU, uh, because some of these patches can get pretty hectic. Um, but we've just got, this is so far, this is just like one layer of many possible layers. If I click on this list tab, got one layer here, but I can add another layer if I would like. And all of these layers have their own key group uh, or number of key groups if you want. You can have, again, like I'm pretty sure it's just like a limitless amount. It just depends on your CPU and, and memory and stuff. Um, but they all feed into the program layer. And so the program layer, you can have various effects uh, on top of it as sort of like a mastering layer for the patch. It kind of reminds me of like uh, combi patches on um, old like workstation keyboards. Well, I say old, they still exist. I'm just not sure how many people use them anymore. <laughs> um, but there's also the event uh, tab where you can have arpeggios and stuff. And that event tab is also within layers. So you, each patch that you make or each program that you make, you can have arpeggios on some layers and not others and so on and so forth. Um, so it's pretty exciting stuff, I think. Uh, so I've got this second layer here. Um, I'm going to do something with that in a second. As you can see, when I click on it, it brings, it's all blank here, but let me go back to the first layer. And, um, I think it's time to add some reverb and, uh, there's a reverb in here called spark verb. Um, and, as with the phaser filter I used before, UVI you, takes a lot of their, a lot of their effects plugins are taken from um, Falcon and expanded upon and released as separate plugins, which is uh, great. Uh, it's a bit frustrating that as a Falcon user, I don't get access to them until I buy those products, but I can access a version of them in Falcon. And so we've got the spark verb here, which is, <clears throat> Um, pretty amazing reverb. There are lots of presets. Uh, I'm just going to bring up a default and I'm going to put the mix all the way up. I'm going to put the low decay down a bit, change the crossover to a little bit further down and the high crossover a little bit further down and the high decay a bit further up. Bring the overall decay up. Uh, change the size to a bigger size. Change the modulation to lo-fi and maybe up it a little bit. Let's see how that sounds. Pretty epic. Um, it's also this diffusion tab, which click it on and we can add, change the diffusion amount. A lot of these settings, which I do find to be quite annoying is they don't update live as you are moving them, which other reverbs can do. So I don't know why this one can't do it. It's the same with the size knob and the shape knob. If I hold it down a chord, move the knob, sound cuts out until you stop it again. Um, pretty annoying. <laughs> Just going to say it because you want to be able to hear the change and fine tune where you want it. Uh, you can't really do that in this, uh, effects unit, which is kind of frustrating. Either way, 
I think that's pretty good sound. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Um, there are other. There's another reverb in here. They've got an. Uh, what do you call it? Impulse response um, convolution reverb in here called I reverb, which is pretty sick as well. Um, but what I would like to do is to add modulation to the layer volume um, after the reverb to get a kind of, uh, actually the way I'm gonna have to do that is add a volume control in between here. So I've got a gain control here and then I can modulate that. And I can modulate it with this thing called smooth random down here, which is kind of what it sounds like. It's just a random control. Uh, I'm gonna turn off retrigger. I'm gonna put the rate up quite high, random start. And I'm gonna put the depth quite a bit down. And then hopefully get that kind of grainy sort of sound, which I always like after a reverb on a pad. I think it's interesting, but then you can, you can then add another, um, reverb afterwards and in this case I'm gonna do uh, let's do cathedral 33 meters just take the dry signal away So that's cool. Um, one thing I would like to do though, just as an experiment, is to see what it would sound like if I modulate the dry signal with an LFO and this Chaos Rossier sound. And if you click this button here, you can sync it, sync the tempo and have clock divisions instead of just um, time and get a rhythmic effect. I turn off bipolar, make it unipolar, bring it down, and then change the depth so it's not so intense. still an extremely basic batch. You don't have you don't have to do very much to get some pretty incredible results, I think. Um and so there's a million places we can go here. One thing I'm just going to do real quick because I know that this is going to get busy quite fast is um I'm going to load up this digital EQ after all of that. And as you can sort of see with the signal chain, it sort of ends up feeling like working in something like Ableton. Of course, it's a different layout and it's a, it's a synth and or a sound design environment, if you will. Um, but you can uh, you can see with the signal chain, it's just kind of like you're just moving blocks around. Like I can move all of these between each other if I want to, uh, which is helpful. Um, and of course, like, I feel like this synth looks doesn't look like really any other plugin and it's when you first see it it can be a little bit daunting or confusing I think but once you start playing with it um it becomes I think it and once you learn it it becomes extremely intuitive I think um and just as a quick heads up if anybody does plan to use to buy this synth or wants to know more about it and they already have it 
Um, I highly recommend the tutorial videos that Dan Worrell did for UVI. They're a few years old now, but they, so they don't have all of the new, um, I keep wanting to call them plugins, but all the new little modules. Um, but it, it's a really great rundown of how to use the platform. Um, his video is just amazing anyway. Um, but in this case, I brought the digital EQ up so that I could drop out some of the mid range because I do think it's going to get quite woolly in there very quickly. You can already see this big peak developing here. All right, I think that that's cool. We've got this other layer here. So what are we gonna do with that? And uh, one thing I like to do with the pad, and this is a very great little module for doing this, is this one called Texture, which is pretty new to Falcon. I think it came out in 2.5, uh, like version 2.5. Uh, speaking of which, um, I think I bought Falcon when it was on like one point, version 1.6 or something like that. Since then, they've had multiple updates and almost every update, certainly the major ones, they give you, as a, as a user, they give you uh, many new features for free. Um, just always appreciated. I think that every developer, plugin developer, should be doing that. And there are plenty of examples where that is not the case. Uh, Hello Waves, for example. Um, so I'm glad they do that. Um, this little tool here called Texture, you've got two panels, uh, two samples that you can load into it from a, a sort of list of different ones. And it just provides like a sort of background atmosphere or texture. Uh, so if I mute this other pad that we've got going, that's what it sounds like by default. Um, so let's have a look at some of these other things here we got. Ultra VHS, if I just mi turn the mix to just to the left side. Some pretty wacky sounds in there. Uh, so I feel like this is ex extremely useful, um, especially just for adding that little bit of atmospheric polish to pads, especially like really big sort of cinematic kind of pads. This sort of stuff I think is, is invaluable. Um, so let's have a look at nature. What about <laughs> Subway? <laughs> I don't think Subway is nature, nor is Rainy Street for that matter, but let's have a listen. That's cool. I'm going to use that. It's definitely not nature, but I'm going to use it. And I'm going to make the sample start completely random. Every time I hit the button, random. Um, you can reverse the sound as well. That's interesting. You can either have it play and it just stops, or you can have it loop. And you can, of course, make it reverse as well. Um, so then we've got these two filters here, which um, it might look like they affect each side, but they don't. They're sort of in series. Um, so if I turn them on by clicking these. So I want to pull out a lot of that bottom end. This is a bandpass filter. This is a, another kind of bandpass filter, I think. Uh. Oof. That was bad. That just completely clipped. Uh, let's hopefully that didn't sound too awful. Maybe I'll cut that bit out. So I think I'm going to modulate some of these because 
it's just fun to modulate stuff in this in this program and there are just so many ways to do it so smooth random is a great one uh because it's it's just random um so let's bring that up and let's turn off rant on random start and turn off retrigger that's way too much of it so let's reduce the intensity of it using this slider Oh, hang on. There's a there's a depth knob as well. So sometimes these modulators have depth knobs. Sometimes they don't. Either way, you've got this master depth, which and it goes into negative as well. So you can have negative depth. So that's very handy. Um, let's bring this depth right down. And let's bring the rate right down too. I just think that it adds more movement, um, which is what you want, really. Uh, so let's turn this other filter back on. Maybe we can add some modulation to this too. Uh, let's go with a multi LFO, which we haven't looked at yet. This is a fun one because you can mix different waveforms in your LFO, so to varying degrees, and you can have a uh, minus or positive. Uh, and it means you can get some sort of pretty interesting waves, I think. Even sample and hold. Um, and if I make it faster, you can see the shape a bit better. <laughs> Obviously, when you make it slower, it just becomes very difficult to see the shape. Um, and you can smooth it out as well, which, especially for some of these sharper waveforms, I think is pretty handy. Uh, got a bit of that. Like I have a rise time, so you can see that that sort of brings it in. And I will re-trigger, no re-trigger. So let's bring down, so right now that's way too intense. And there's, let's bring the depth down a bit. It's also way too fast, so we're gonna change the frequency. Change the depth a bit more. And let's move this mix knob across so, and let's ch change uh, what we got here. Material, sandboard, sandfall. What does that sound like? Let's move across. Let's try the other one. I like that. We can pan these two as well if we want, but I think that they're better off. So I guess we could pan them and modulate the panning. Um, let's do that. Let's uh, do another LFO. Um, one thing you can do, which is cool, uh, and this is not like super uncommon in sense, but it is always welcome, is when you put it on sample and hold, you can smooth it out completely. So it's a smooth sample and hold rather than a, uh, it adds slew, uh, slew rate to the sample and hold for all of you modular people out there. You'll understand what I mean by that. Um, let's change the depth down significantly. Let's do the same to the other one. Sample and hold, it's completely smooth, bipolar, no re-trigger. No re-trigger on this one either. Let's turn the depth right down. And the frequency down. So now we've just got quite a bit of movement happening, which with a pad, that's you know, the first thing you want to do, really. And we need to adjust these envelopes, uh, this volume envelope, so...
So that's cool. Um, one thing I would like to do now that we've got that basic sound down is to add a filter to it. And I'm going to add a band reject filter. Let's take out a lot of that woolly middle of the road sound. Um, and I'm also going to modulate this, but only a tiny amount. And at the moment we have several LFOs going. Um, so I'm going to use one of these existing LFOs so that as to not add another one. So I'm going to do uh, add modulation key group. And as you can see here, my current modulation sources are available. So I'm going to click the multi LFO. And for each uh, modulate, uh, for each modulation destination, you can you have a separate slider here. So even though the depth is there, I can. It's already quite low, so it probably doesn't need it. But I could change that further still, or reverse it. So it's sort of the opposite of the other modulator, which is again, it's very handy. Don't need much modulation for this. It's it's kind of good at a very low level, I think. Um, what else do we need to do to this? So, we've talked about filters, we've talked about oscillators a bit, we've talked about modulation in the sense of LFOs and envelopes. There's a whole section here of, like, modulating effects, um, which are pretty cool, but uh, maybe we can look at them in another video. They're all grayed out here because on the key group, a lot of them aren't available, and I'll maybe talk about that in another video because it's kind of... It's, it's a bit complicated, and I don't really think it's worth getting into here. Um, but I think that maybe another filter on top of this, maybe like a low-pass filter... What have we got? Maybe we can try this VC. This is an MS-20 filter clone. We pick up. It just like cleans it up a bit, ironically, because it's an MS-20 filter, usually it dirties it up. But the way of just cutting some of those frequencies out. Um, and I think this also, this layer also needs a reverb. So this time I'm going to use the, uh, just a preset, I think. And I'm going to use, uh, what have we got here? Let's just go with... Dutch church, shall we? Let's see how it sounds with the pad, with the synth. that attack a bit and the release
All right. I think that sounds great. Um, again, it's all pretty simple, I think, so far. You can go so wild with this. That's why I want to explore it in a series of videos because there's just so many things to look at. It's so much fun to be had. Um, I'm going to bring in another layer. And this time we're going to do something a bit different. We're going to bring in a noise layer. And uh, there are all these different noise sources uh, or types to choose from. I'm going to turn on stereo because it's always better. Um, they all have this sort of bandwidth or it does different things for different filters. I'll turn the stereo off so you understand. It's better. <laughs> Uh, I guess there's, you know, definitely case by case basis, but. So there's different kinds of, that one doesn't have a bandwidth control, the violet one. Or does the Lorenz. Some of these just don't, I guess this dust one does. Ooh, pretty harsh sounding some of them, but that's their point. That's the reason they exist. That's an interesting one. As is that one. So lots of cool options here. Um, I was gonna go with blue, but maybe we can go with crackle and see where it takes us because what I'm gonna do with this noise is I'm gonna Bring in this state variable filter. I'm gonna bring the resonance almost all the way up, just, just a tad below. Turn the key tracking all the way up. And one th cool thing which you can do is you can, instead of putting in a frequency range for the filter cutoff, you can just type in uh, a note. So I'm gonna do C4. I think you can do this as some other sense, but it's, it's really good that you can do it because it makes key tracking real simple. Um, and let's uh, see how that sounds. Perfect. Um, and then if we just bring the sustain down, bring the release right up, bring the decay up a bit. That sounds great. might modulate this color here. And one way that's cool to modulate things, um, again, this is, I don't think this is a secret technique or anything that I discovered, it's not, it's very basic, but if we just chuck in a sample and hold and we leave it on re-trigger, every time we hit a key, it will be at a different part of uh, the range. And I'm going to bring the depth down quite a bit and put the smooth up. And you can see on the screen here, it starts in different places whenever I hit the key. So I get a lot of variety. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to bring in another filter here to cut out some of that high end. a envelope to that as well just or maybe just an attack decay yeah that's cool um, and this is already sounding pretty woolly so I think it needs some EQ Surprising, I'm sure. I'm sure you're very surprised. Um, I don't even know what this one does. What is this? This is another impulse response convolver. We can get back to that another time. See, I've had this plugin for years and there's still stuff that I have not explored. Um, so, uh, what was I doing? Uh, EQ. Got this digital EQ. Gonna use that. Let's take some of the low end off because I'm not going to need that.
So do that, yes. Do that. Can I gain down? Hmm. All right, so that's cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and one other thing you can do, uh, which I always really like, is you can add up hegios, which is fun. But you also have all these different types of sequences, some of which are very odd uh, and pretty cool. Like if I just go down to some one of these other ones down here, like this one. Oh, sorry, not that one. Um, is it the warp sequencer? Or waterfall? I don't know. Let's just pick one. That's cool. Uh, you can loop it. Um, I've not actually used this one before. That's pretty. That's pretty neat. Um, let's get rid of it though. Uh, there's also like a Euclidean sequencer, which is fun. I don't really know how to use it um let's just bring it up anyway just for, for lols um it's presets down here which is handy when you don't know what you're doing with it like me i might bring that resonance down just a tad a tad it's uh pretty full on Anyway, we're just going to go with the basic arpeggiator because it's just basic. Um, and I'm going to use a preset of which there are many. Um, in this case, ooh, which one? Let's try this one. Just the first one. <clears throat> Pretty much exactly what I was thinking. Um, it sounds like it has reverb, but it has no reverb. But that's just the nature of this sound so far, like this type of sound with the filter noise pinging kind of thing. Um, key tracked. So I'm going to bring in a delay. And we've got this dual delay, which I always quite enjoy. And there's this pa uh, preset here, which I find is a good place to start a lot of the time. There's so many presets and also it's pretty easy to use on its own. Just bring it up. All right. So Let's bring in the other elements. Let's just bring down the volume of this layer a bit.
I also thought it might be interesting to have the sound uh, of the arpeggio come in slower, like like it is like with the pad and with the noise. Um, I'm wondering, there are multiple ways I could probably go about this, but I feel like modulating this here is probably going to be a good bet. Uh, so let's add modulation, let's add a new ADSR, and let's bring the attack up, maybe not quite as much, release up about there. Keep everything else the same. Let's turn this up a bit. So that's all well and good. I think this attack is slightly on the arpeggio is tightly, it's slightly too slow. Now, just out of curiosity, what would it sound like if I had originally used the noise that I was thinking of using, which was the blue noise? What have we got then? I quite like it with the crackle. I think it adds this extra sort of dimension. All right. <clears throat> I kind of think that that's where this patch is going to end. Uh, let's just do one final touch and we will add a maximizer. good. I think that the this needs a touch of reverb. So I'm gonna pick a preset. Uh, what have we got here for spark verb? <clears throat> Where is it? Hall? Is it in hall? No. No. Lost piano. Let's try that. Okay, so one final touch that I think would be good is for the arpeggio here to pan with each uh, with each uh, note that it plays slightly. So with the layer here, I'm going to modulate this and I'm going to modulate it with a sample and hold LFO but I'm going to sync it to the same rate as the um, arpeggio. That's way too much. So let's bring it down a bit.
I also think that maybe the arpeggio should sort of fade out a bit once the pad sort of gets going. anything else maybe an EQ on the master let's just do that real quick I mean of course you can just do that in the door which is usually what I do uh, you know fab filters pro Q3 a little bit more fun to use than this I feel like dropping a bit out around here it's usually pretty helpful maybe a little bit around somewhere here this but it might be obvious but um, I can modulate all of these if I want and uh, the cool thing about that is it kind of makes them uh, I'm not sure if you can do it with event followers of envelope followers maybe you can't well you can do some fun things with this EQ regardless you can turn it into a huge parametric filter if you want um, <clears throat> anyway I think that that's where I'm going to leave it for today. I'll just play out with some nice sounds. Um, and I'll come back soon to do another video using this wonderful software another day uh, soon. And hopefully people will enjoy that. <laughs> uh, I'm excited to start doing YouTube stuff again. Um, I use software so much these days that... Uh, I think that I'm going to mostly be talking about software that I really like, but I do have hardware still, which I will also be talking about. I've got a few pieces of gear which are pretty new to me and I would like to maybe cover in a video at some point. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, you did, please subscribe to my channel, um, like the video, all of those fun things. And I'll catch you later. And I'll play this for a little bit longer.